I have a device that was diagnosed with long screw damage. I want to make sure I can recover the data back up to iCloud or computer, but if possible, a full fix to the device would be great. The device has been inspected but has not been worked on. So here we are under the microscope. This is the middle screw hole on an iPhone 6. He is very concerned about getting the data and I am very concerned as to why it looks like the middle screw hole has been removed if it has not been worked on. I mean, what the hell is going on? Let's see if we can figure out what is actually going on because on the iPhone 6, the bottom left screw hole is one of the most common ones to get pounded and this one is actually fine. And then if we scroll over here and we look at the bottom right hand screw hole, it is also fine. It's the middle screw hole here that's been messed with. So let's get rid of the screen assembly. We'll disconnect that. So we've got a component missing here. We're going to disconnect the top flex. Let's get rid of the display and now touch. It looks like somebody has probably replaced FL2024. The backlight anode filter here has, uh, has been screwed with. It looks like it's probably been replaced. Maybe it's got... Eh, it's hard to say. It doesn't really look bad. Alright, so it's definitely not long screw damage. So what exactly is it? And also, let's look for the passcode. Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, I've got a note here. <gasps> Yay, we got a passcode. That means you're most likely going to get your data today. So, diagnosed with long screw damage. They don't really get diagnosed with long screw damage. They just get long screw damage during a diagnosis, right? I'm getting mixed feelings from the description here. Let's just start from the beginning. Let's pretend like the customer has told me absolutely nothing because sometimes that's better. And uh, let's diagnose this thing. I... I'm going to start with a multimeter in diode mode. So let's have a look at the board view here. I'm going to rotate this to the left just so that our orientation is the same exact way that it is on the, on the screen here. This is flex board view that I'm using. It is available for purchase from pldaniels.com. However, the board view that I'm looking at is not yet available. Everybody harass Paul Daniels to get that. Okay, so we're going to be starting right here at the display connector. We're going to start with PP1V8LCMCON. We're going to put our red probe on ground and we're going to put our black probe on PP1V8LCMCON and we are getting 0L, is that right? Okay, the meter is working. PP1V8LCMCON, that is getting 0L. So we're not getting 1.8 volts to that. Now that actually absolutely could be long screw damage here in this hole because that's the trace that I worry about. Huh. I think this is actually going to be long screw damage. So apparently somebody long screw damaged it and then somebody else diagnosed it with long screw damage. That's what happened. All right. Well, we're not going to take the board out of this one. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and remove the screw hole, shall we? I know how much you guys like hearing me talk about screw holes. All right. Let's get some PP1V8LCMCON fixed here because... It's not good. We can't get the image on the screen without PP1V8LCMCON. Now, normally whenever I run into this fault, the first thing that I will check is the filter, but I mean, come on, look at this middle screw hole. It looks completely, totally, utterly mutilated. I mean, th th this is gonna be what it is. So let's get in here and fix it. Come on, Paul, we need long screw damage data on these board view files, please, right away. I need it like yesterday. All right, so I'm going to grab a hold of this with my crappy tipped hot tweezers. The tweezers are cool, the tips are horrible. And let's see if we can get it to melt. Come on, baby. Seriously? All right, let's get some more solder. Are you serious right now? Come on, come loose. You can't possibly still be stuck. All right, geez, thank you. I didn't work on it. I swear I didn't work on it. Okay, so it is definitely long screw damage, and it is also definitely a prior repair attempt. 
This is going to be an easy repair and also very much welcome today, man. These things have been nuts. Let's get some alcohol on here. Oh Lord. You guys, I'm breaking a I'm breaking a rule. I am breaking a major rule here. I'm digging in on a repair without verifying the problem. I, I have verified that I know why this phone's not getting an image, but I have not verified that it boots or anything. Oh, this is bad. Look at this. This is pulled up like way out here. Holy crap. I don't know. Let, let's let's see how this goes. There is a large section of PCB pulled up, guys. So this line right here, this is PP1V8. We want to make sure it's not shorted to ground, but we do need to need to be able to get to it. Okay, and you can see it's just completely, it's totally severed right there. And we're trying to make sure that it's not shorted to ground over here, because what you can see here, this is this is ground plane. And then right here is a substrate, and then there's PP1V8. So this and this are two separate things. And it looks like, you know, it looks like the brake is only right there. So to fix this, we only have to get a jumper right, I mean, just like right here. We're going to put a jumper from here to here. Boom, have a nice day. You have image, okay? Get some flux in there. That, that is the tip of my flux syringe. Look how big it is compared to the area that I'm working on. Holy smokes. All right, there we go. We got some flux. I'm going to use a little bit fatter wire than I normally use for long screw damage because uh, this could potentially be carrying more current. And you'll see that their trace is also much fatter too. That's because this is a low, low voltage, higher current line, assuming doesn't matter. We're just going to assume and solder this right on here. And then we're also going to assume that it's still that it's still booted. I mean, it most likely did. Cool. This is rare. Normally when people say they're going to send me an iPhone 6 with long screw damage, it's the bottom left hole and it's a nightmare. Ooh, whoops, what have I done? Ooh, baby. Yeah, it looks good. All right, let's trim it off. Throw some alcohol on it and see if we boot with image. You know, we didn't test it beforehand, but we know PP1V8 LCM con is missing. And whenever that line is missing, you are absolutely positively, beyond the shadow of a doubt, not getting image. You're not getting backlight. You are not getting chestnut enable. You are not getting 5v7. You are not getting anything without that line. So let's clean this up. Make sure we're not shorted to ground. Maybe we'll get lucky and this PCB pulled apart over here won't be causing us any issues. Man, they were so close. Whoever dug in thinking about fixing this, you were so close, man. If you would have just hung in there. I'm actually, no, I'll take that back. I'm glad you didn't hang in there because that makes my life easier right now. Unless you got it, I mean, you see to, to fix this, I've soldered a wire across here. And now I'm going through here and I'm tucking back bits and pieces of ground to make sure it's not going to get shorted.
this one looks like we have much promise to get an image. All right, pick some fuzz back. Can't have any fuzz in there. All right, let's get right back down here to PP1V8 LCM Con and see if we've got a normal diode mode reading. We are going to put our red probe on ground and we're going to put our black probe on PP1V8 LCM Con and we are getting 0.26. That is a normal diode mode reading. That tells me that this phone will most likely get an image on the screen. Uh, to be cute, let's use the customer screen. Oops. <laughs> I did, guys, I did the entire repair with the battery hooked up. Hypocrite, right here, me, hypocrite, whole repair with the battery hooked up. I'm a total failure. Okay, we're gonna boot this on DC power supply. Let's hook up our green probe. Right here, huh? Whole entire repair with the battery hooked up, PP1V8. At least it wasn't 1V8 always, right? All right, we're gonna press the power baton in one, two, three. Boot. Image, yay, image. My work is done. Build a customer, we're done, right? No, let's let this thing boot. He is going to be very glad to get his phone back, and I believe everything will work. There we go. We've got some crazy color-y thing going on here with the screen. Look, it turned like werewolf red, right? What's up with this? What's it going to do? I don't think I've seen one turn werewolf red before. What in the hell? Spooky. This will be my Halloween phone. All right, we are up to a slide to unlock. We have working touch. I got some flickery stuff going on here with the screen. I think he's got a faulty screen assembly. You think that could be why they've got a black X on the back of it? Huh? Huh? They wouldn't pawn a faulty screen assembly off on me, would they? Nobody would do that, right? Yeah, that's a faulty screen assembly. Dun, 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 dun. Is it an original screen? All right, let me grab a known good test screen. The big black X on the back of it gives away the fact that they most likely knew that that screen was bad. Okay, now let's see if we get working touch using a screen that I know has a crappy picture. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not as bad as it used to be. Let's see if we have working touch. I bet you we do. Okay, and instead of fading to werewolf red, it faded to more of a, a normal color. This is, you know, this is normal. Yeah, that other screen is faulty. This was just a, uh, just a single trace broken under the middle screw hole. Woohoo! I like an easy job once in a while. passcode and everything. Okay, I'm going to install a screen on it. I'm going to make a backup of the data, shoot the customer an invoice, and I'll retain that backup of the data for 30 days or until the customer says, hey, it's okay to delete my backup, just in case anything happens before they get it back. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here because I don't wanna record myself installing an iPhone 6 screen. I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Now to apply UV mask, I use a toothpick as if it were a paint bucket. I dip it in the tube <laughs> and whenever I pull it out it has green UV mask all over the toothpick. I use that toothpick for dipping. I'll take the blade and rake a little bit off the toothpick. Oh come on, who put the... I'm trying to make All right, so we dip it in the toothpick here, and it gives a nice, it's, it's a nice way to get this crap all over the tip of your blade, or get this only on the tip of your blade, because it all the time it just, 
This is such a small amount of this stuff, man. It's, sometimes it's just hard to get it where you need it.